Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today we're going to discuss about very important topic of assembly language, which is to pass assembler. But before starting this video, there is a request. If you think this video helps you to get knowledge, then share this video to other people and like and subscribe our channel if you are new to our YouTube channel. So without wasting any time, let's go through it. So first thing we are going to discuss is that what exactly the assembler is. So here it is. An assembler is a type of computer program that interrupts software program written in assembly language into machine language. Code and instructions that can be executed by the computer. So here in the diagram you can see that here we have the assembly code and with the help of the assembler we can easily convert this assembly code into the machine code. So please note this diagram. This is very important diagram. Let's move to the next slide. So let's discuss the two pass assembler. The two pass assembler scans the source program written in assembly language twice to generate the object program. These scans are normally called pass one and pass two. In the first pass, the assembler reads the entire source code file looking only for label definition. All labels are collected, assigned values, and placed in the symbol table in the pass. No instructions are assembled and at the end of this pass, the simple table should contain all the labels definition in the program. Moreover, the assembler store information pertaining to the literals in a literal table during this pass. The pass one also called the analysis phase of two pass assembler and it analyzed the source code. In the second pass, the instruction are again read and are assembled using simple table, literal table, and other tables. The pass 2 is also called a synthesis phase of two pass assembler as it synthesizes the output received from the analysis so as to generate the object code. So, here in the diagram, you can see that here we have the source program and uh, we have the pass 1 and pass 2, and we have these data structure in between them. And with the help of these data structure, we can store the data from uh, data in the pass one and pass two. And uh, here we have the intermediate code. And when these two passes are completed, and uh, after that we get the targeted program. That means our machine code. So this diagram is very important for the two pass assembler. Please note this diagram. I hope you note that this note this diagram. So let's move to the next slide. So let's discuss the pass one of the two pass assembler. So pass one examines each assembly statement one at the time and separate the labels, mnemonics and operand field. The assembler maintains a location counter variable that keep tracks of addresses of the current instruction or data item as assembly proceed. When the assembler starts it clears the location counter assuming that the first instruction will go into the location 0. After each instruction is assembled, the assembler increments the location counter by the length of the instruction. For each line of the source code, the first pass of the assembler performs the following operation. So these are the following operations. If the symbol is encountered in the label field, it enters into the symbol table. Along with the current value of the location counter, as its value, if it is not already in the table, the simple table initially starts with no entries and entries in it and grows every time symbol is added to it. If the instruction is imperative, mnemonic field of the instruction is examined and validated by, by matching it with the mnemonic field in the machine op code table. If it is not found in this table, the assembler treated the mnemonic as an illegal mnemonic and, sing and signaled an error message. On the other hand, if it's matched with an entry in the table, the location counter is increased by the length of the instruction, which can be determined by the mode table length field. If an operand of the imperative statement is a literal 
then that literal is inserted in the literal table without it address value until space is actually allotted for it either explicitly through LTRONG directives or implicitly upon execution of the end directives. On encountering a pseudo instruction, it is examined and validated using PIT tab and the course of the action depend upon the type of pseudo instruction. If the instruction is start or ORG or location counter is set to the address specification of the operand field. If the pseudo instruction is DS or DC, location counter is incremented by the amount of memory required for storing the data symbol. This is done by invoking the appropriate routine for the pseudo instruction table bit tab. If EQU pseudo instructions is present, then there is no chance in the value of location counter, but symbols in the label field are entered into the simple table along with the associated value given in the operand field of equation statement. If the LTORG pseudo instruction is encountered, the assembler make a scan of the literal table and address are assigned to each literal in the literal table that are not yet assigned address. The value of location counter is used as the address of each such literal and this value is incremented according to the size of the literal. If end pseudo instruction is encountered, it ends pass one of the two pass assembler that means one complete scan of the source code is complete. So congratulations, the pass one is completed. So this is the diagram of a two uh, of the pass one. So here we have the first pass, which have location counter zero, and then uh, we have the scan next line of code, and we have the label. If yes, store symbols in the address symbol table together with the value of location counter and then it increment the location counter and again move to the again move to the scan next line of code if the table is org if yes then set location counter to uh, set location counter on the next line of code and if not then it's end instruction and if end is that then go to the pass to and if m end is not then again increment the location counter and uh, uh, see for the labels. So this uh, flow chart is uh, uh, moving uh, again and again for the assembler. I hope you understand this flow chart. So please note this flow chart. I hope you write the flow chart. So let's move to the next slide. So here we have created clear, clear the pass one and now let's move to the pass two. After the completion of pass one, the pass two of two pass assembler scans the source code again for the beginning. In this pass, the actual translation of the assembly code to appropriate machine code is done. So please note this. This is a very important point. It uses the table, symbol table and literal table, creates in pass one and generates the machine code which is then written into an object file. The location counter is initialized to zero and in pass one in the beginning. So here is the diagram of the pass two. Here we have the pass two where location counter is zero. So here we have the scan next line of code. If the instruction is pseudo instruction, then it goes to the ORG and if it yes, then set location counter to the next line of code. And after that, uh, if the pseudo instruction is not, uh, then it move to the MRI instruction. If yes, then get operation code and set bit 2 to 4 and after that, search address symbol table for binary equivalent of the simple address and set bit 5 to 16 and if check for the i that means increment and uh, if yes 
then set first bit to 1 and if i is 0 then set first bit to 0 and then assembly all the, assemble all the parts of the binding instruction and store the location counter given by lc and then increment the location counter and after that it move to the scan the next line of code and uh, if the neuro instruction if the ORE is a uh, no then it's moved to the end and uh, then it's also increment the location counter and uh, if MRI instruction is not valid then valid known MRI instruction and if it is yes then store by the equivalent of the instruction location given by the location counter and again it increment the location counter and again cycle move to scan next line of code and uh, and also for uh, if a uh, valid known MRI instruction is false then error in the line of code and then again increment the location counter and then again scan the next line of code so that's the flow chart of the pass to how it's work so I hope you can understand that so please note this pass to diagram so let's move to the next slide. So friends, that's all for now in this video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you can not miss any upcoming video in future. And thank you all.